Last class, we talked about assignment one, and very quickly, we're introduced to elements of setting design, trying to uh, sketch out a vision for our fantasy landscapes that we will be compositing, and keeping in mind what's called three layers of depth. So this was the, the quick little sketch I mocked up in Photoshop, and then these were some of the references I pulled from Pixabay that helped to inform my sketch. Right? And it's always good to have some inspiration in mind to begin with, because when you're dealing with a setting, if you're not working with an art director or, or a cinematographer or someone who's telling you what the setting is, you have to define it for yourself. And the setting is time, place, environmental factors, right? So if I say something like, I want my setting to be on the surface of the moon, right? But then I also have to say, what kind of environmental factors? So is it gonna be on the surface of the moon where there's a lot of dust that's just been kicked up by a recent asteroid that's hit it, right? That's gonna make it look different. And then I have to think, what kind of lighting conditions? Is it like a sunrise condition on the moon? Is it a sunset condition on the moon? Is it bright light high above? That's gonna change the shadows, it's gonna change the coloring. And then it's this fantasy, right? So we might say, and then on the moon, there is like, there are hidden canyons with water in them, right? There are ice caverns on the moon. So these are all the kind of things you can think about. But you need to think about that a little bit before you start searching for terms, right? Otherwise, you'll be finding some images at sunset, some images in noonday light, and they're going to be hard to use together. So my inspiration was kind of this surrealist imagery, some of these kind of more serene set designs, and then kind of the, the desert of Looney Tune backgrounds. And so I'm going for this kind of surreal desert. That's the general thing. And then when I was looking at my references, I kind of liked the spooky nighttime vibe of it, especially with this reference I found on Pixabay. Your references can really inform things you might want to do, because I really like this sky element, right? That moon's way too big. It's got like the whole Milky Way galaxy kind of superimposed. And it makes it look a little otherworldly, a little surreal. And we could always add other planetary bodies into it. The things I'm trying to avoid in my finished composition are what we call figurative elements, right? So this one, I really liked these weird peaks. And I might be able to use them. They're not the best asset right from the beginning because they're so limited in their color range, right? This is very yellow and orange, but we're going to learn how to, to work with that, right? The computer can't make up stuff that's not already in the image, but it can shift and alter what's in the image. So I can shift this to match the color temperature of what I want, but I'm not going to be able to get more color variety than it already has. So for instance, we don't want to use black and white photos if we want to have a color landscape, right? So what do I mean by figurative elements? Things that you would expect to be moving. So this balloon would definitely not be something I want to use in my composition because when you just look at it for a few seconds and that balloon's not moving, it doesn't feel believable anymore, right? It feels like a postcard instead of a background setting where other things might be animated. Uh, cities that are active cities from a distance, like especially a skyline or something, we wouldn't expect to be moving, right? But like city streets with cars on them up close, we would expect there to be movement there, especially if there are vehicles that look perfectly operational. So you just want to watch that. Bodies of water, of course, will like shimmer and change a little bit with time, but as long as it's fairly still water, it's perfectly fine for, for a landscape, right? But like rapid rivers with lots of rocks and bumps and white water that's probably good to avoid at least in the middle ground and foreground and then of course stars blink on and off you know clouds move but these happen slowly enough and softly enough that usually it doesn't impact setting design and already you see just from those two references wildly different colors so part of this project is not just blending the elements together to all fit into a composition, but also deciding on kind of a color and a temperature and an atmosphere for everything that makes it believable. Then there's this one, which 
does not look believable, right? But what I liked about it was this foreground element, this heavy kind of silhouetted rock. And I might be able to find something better. So sometimes you choose a resource just for a small aspect. And I'm using Pixabay to find these things. Most of them are photographic. Some of them are kind of digitally composited. Right? But I was interested in just using this part of this sketch. But you need minimum of five references. I have four here, but I'm going to want more than that. So I go to Pixabay and I, I think, what does a surreal desert mean to me? There's all kinds of ways you can search for it. And I definitely recommend Pixabay for this because everything's going to be very high quality resolution. And there's lots and lots of landscape photos on Pixabay with almost every tag you could think of. So I want these rocks to not only be strange shapes, but also maybe some strange coloring, right? And so I get lots of results. And some of them was like, oh, that's amazing. Notice if there's a robot in the corner. This is a new thing, right? And that means that they are AI generated. Doesn't mean that it's off limits to you, but usually AI generated content, the pixels won't match photographic pixels. They'll be a little too smooth, at least at this point with the AI generated stuff. And that is the problem with this one. This one is AI generated. It just has a, a slightly different feel, right? So instead, I'm going to look at these kind of photographic references and I will download them. I'm signed in so I can download them at the highest resolution. If you're not signed in, you can download them at the second highest. And signing in is free, just with any email. And Pixabay, at least so far, I've been using it for about 10 years, has never sent me spam. You know, so that's nice. And then you can also look for little details that you might put into foregrounds. So little croppings of rocks. Sometimes I'll find things in my searches that I wasn't explicitly looking for, but they give me ideas. And we can always download more than we need. Or these kind of shapes, like prehistoric monuments, monoliths, what are called cairns. I'm just going to download more than I need. Even though this is kind of a small rock on a beach, doesn't mean I can't transplant that into the desert, right? Because it has kind of different shapes. Looks a little surreal. Same thing with this nice silhouette. As we get used to this, you're going to start noticing that some resources are easier to cut out than others, right? This one is going to be super easy because there's such a clean contrast, sharp edge contrast between the sky and the rock. It's like it was shot on a green screen or on a blue screen, and just easily able to, to remove. So we'll be learning those skills. And then some nice uh, sea rocks again. And so this was the, the AI. And it will say AI generated below it as well. Still high quality. It looks really good. AI is getting quite good, right? If you are careful and curate it. Like you can even see the rocks under the water here. But this lighting is so specific, right? That if I were to use this, like let's say for my foreground element, I'd have to really, really change everything else to force it into this lighting condition. So it it might not give me as much depth as I want or as much visual interest. So careful of, of too extreme lighting for this. If you're photographing your own reference, you just want them to be like even, clean exposures because you can always add more dramatic lighting to something. But if something is too dark or too light, you can't really bring it back to middle easily. So, now that I've downloaded those, what do I do with them? They go into my downloads folder, and I'm going to move them, all these new ones, 
into my assignment folder, this reference folder. This reference folder, it's also where I have the sketch I started. I want to make pretty big on my screen. And then I was showing you this just at the end of last class. I want to have all of them here. I'll change this name really quickly. So it shows up at the end. I want to have all of my images visible. And you can do that within what's called the Finder, which is just the program for organizing folders on a Mac, by using these three dots and going to Show View Options in the folder. And you can make your icons bigger or smaller, and then you can also decrease the grid spacing between them. And to fit them all on, you just organize them by name is a good way to do it. So these were the four that I based my sketch on, but then here are some others. Now I'm going to use them to improve my sketch. How can I improve my sketch? How can I really build in this idea of foreground, middle ground, and background? So I have my tablet here. I'm going to sketch digitally, but you can do this with a pencil on your paper. We're going to do a little exercise. So you're going to hold up your hands. It actually helps to stand up so you have some distance in front of your eyes. Okay, you're going to put one hand in front of your face. And then you're going to focus on that hand. And I want you to notice while you're still focusing on that hand how behind it everything's a little blurry. So that is two layers of depth. Your hand is foreground, the background is background. Right? They're very distinct. That is some layer of depth. Now you're going to take your other hand and you're going to fit it between the hand you have up and your face. Now if you focus on the hand that's closest to you, you might go a little cross-eyed, but notice that it's still just foreground and background, because now your other hand is blurry along with the background. But if you focus on the hand that's in the middle, that's further away from your eyes, you'll be looking through a blurry hand in the front, sharply focused on the middle ground, and then behind that middle ground, you'll see the blurry background. That is the three layers of depth we want to get. Does that make sense? Narratively? Where is the only place you have the sharpest contrast and the sharpest edges and the most texture? That's going to be in the middle ground. So often things in the foreground might get really dark, you know, like this rock is here. And things in the background might get really soft and atmospheric in their coloring. So how can I add that into my sketch? If I only have kind of two layers of depth in my sketch, which is a really common way to do art, how can I get three or more, right? So, let's fit all this over here. And what reference is best for that? So this is how we improve our sketch. And then to really improve it, I'm going to sketch it not only horizontally, to give myself options and understanding of my reference. But I'm also going to sketch it, I'll shrink this a little, um, vertically, using some of the same elements, right? And I just use this soft kind of brush, so it is like using a soft pencil, just trying things out quickly. So here I had number two, that's these kind of rocky mountains. Three, I like that for the sky. But here, these rocks I'm pretty fond of for maybe a, a middle ground, you know, coming behind this foreground. So I might add that in. And that might be five. And then I can label it as such. Let's see, number four, I was just thinking of those, but that's not as interesting probably as this which has varied lighting. So I'm gonna kind of build up that middle ground, make it more complex by having these jagged stones. I'm gonna flip it. And then this is gonna be four. So I'm gonna change this. Rename this. Sometimes I'll do it with color codes too. It can be a little faster.
but now that's going to work. And I can always 